Hey, so I wanted to make a video today. Audo billahi min ash-shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Check out my situation. I have a pulmonary pulmonary fibrosis, most likely, and I have a limited amount of money. Uh, and where I'm staying at my house, it's uh, the allergens are there. So sleeping in the only place where I feel sleep safe sleeping is probably going to kill me if I keep it up. And I realize I've been doing it for like two and a half months now. Um, and it's made things a lot worse. And I really need to get somewhere with clean air that's affordable for a sustainable amount of time. But I have to balance it with all these other priorities. Like I need to get stem cell treatment long term for this treatment. I've been trying to get married for like 15 years now. And the money I have right now is supposed to be what's supposed to get me married you know i'm supposed to build some sort of sustainable business out of this money and it's all impossible to do and so i'm trying to seek support and the way i'm seeking support is trying to make hijra to chechnya and appealing to amir ramzan Kadirov on the basis of i'm bani adam you're bani adam for the sake of allah for the akhwat of the mu'mineen and akhwat of the muslimin and um and for the ilm of the Quran that I have in my heart and because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's blood is in my veins as a Sayyid and because I'm a Muslim and not only a Muslim, I'm a Maghlub my health has been, they have been, they've gotten a fata on my, my salam, my health you know, and I need shifa and but it's freezing cold there, that's the only place on earth that I see some sort of um, sanctuary you know I don't know where else to go other than there to get sanctuary um, it seems like he has the resources but it's so f cold there and I love the cold but with this it might complicate things you know I, I'm so scared to go there all by myself I have no one to talk to I have no support around this at all whatsoever and the place I feel like going maybe where treatment is still like likely is I want to put some like stem cell treatment in and like I want to do a couple rounds of it over two or three months and I might end up going to living in Rosarito while I get the treatment in Tijuana once a month but that's going to use up a significant amount of my money like within four or five months I'm going to need to come back to the US and um, immediately head out for Tbilisi Georgia get the money I have there and then go to uh, then go to um, uh, Russia you know, then go to Russia, uh, to Chechnya, and try to make this appeal. Or I can go make the appeal right now and have faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide some type of circumstances for me <sighs> that will work out and he'll immediately say yes and then I have to take another 36 hour flight back here and it's going to delay the treatment, you know what I mean? And so the optimal way kind of seems to me to like go get the treatment in Tijuana, leave afterwards, but what do I do until then? You know what do I do until then? Um, like it's hard to, um, it's hard to kind of make sense of, you know. And and it's like while you're sick and it's difficult to breathe, so my brain power isn't the way it used to be, you know. And I'm just freaking sick. Just check out my situation and my family, my hypocritical family, my sociopathic narcissistic family. Like they don't they don't care at all. Like and you know I can't get involved with them because the moment I do, they're gonna use this to kill me. They will kill me. This is a weakness. And they've been, they're like a pack of raptors and wolves who've been wanting to kill me forever. And this is it. I'm wounded. You know, they're going to kill me. And the same thing goes for like my, uh, my community here. You know, they're going to support, they're go my family's going to murder me and the community is going to help cover it up. The Muslim community in New Orleans. And it's like, is it murder? I believe it is murder. And I think an expert should be consulted in this case, like a expert on narcissistic family dynamics, golden child, invisible child, and the dynamics and the, the different pathways that can occur with different personalities and different treatments from the narcissist and like um, codependent formation in childhood that's enslaving, coupled with religious doctrine of absolute obedience to parents and absolute goodness to parents and honoring of the parents. Like you got to look at all this, like it's psychological mind fucking like it's gaslighting it's totally fucked in the ass it's like a horrible thing i'm sorry for that type of language but what i'm emphasizing is that someone
someone who's experienced that, like that, that it, it's like it blows your mind, man. Like the, the 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 immense suffering and torture you go through, and there's real health effects. Like if I have you know COPD or uh, more likely uh, fibrosis, uh, cystic or, or pulmonary fibrosis or some some lung disease, whatever it is, if I have it, especially fibrosis. Um, you can blame me all you want, but my father had, you know, my narcissistic sociopathic father who raised me to be codependent and enslaved to him on a very deep unconscious level to the point where even though I was self-aware and intelligent and I was always aware of it, it was really difficult to disentangle and he's really slippery. He's a sociopath and sociopaths are against human nature. So you grow up like wanting to trust your father. That's the thing. There's a deep desire in a son to just trust his father. There's a deep desire. And when religious doctrine and all sorts of stuff like really adds a lot of weight beyond the biological to it, man, that's just hard to get out of. Forgive me. And um, so I'm just, man, like it just, what a journey, man. Like what a journey. I remember being two or three years old, like because he used to do these things to my mom and my mom didn't have anyone to confide in except her firstborn two or three year old son who you know she said like basically hug me to her and cry like I remember like consoling her like she literally crew and like cried into my shoulder with her face pressed to my tiny neck you know and with my tiny arms around her neck and me standing in her lap when I was like two or three years old because my dad like you know did something freaking horrible you know he did horrible horrible stuff I'll make a video separately about that. And so, you know, it's like, and, and all of that. So I naturally, I was never going to, having seen that at a young age, I was never going to submit to my dad's evil, to his injustice, to his unfairness, to, to his zulm, you know. I was never going to submit to it. And Islam doesn't require me to submit to the zulm of my father. Okay, that is not what Islam requires. Islam never requires you to submit to the zulm of your father. It requires you to rebel against the zulm of your father, you know. And uh, this, this narrative that the traditionalists have built up is total bullshit. It preserves the unjust state. The pragmatic parents are to be honored in the name of religion, but it's not real religion. And what happens is when the pragmatic parents are honored, uh, idealistically then pragmatism results and then the pragmatic state the unjust state is preserved in every family and every clan and everywhere because in every child parent child relationship that exists throughout society <clears throat> Anyways, that's it for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.